This is a course on data structures and object oriented design. Uh, this uh, course is based on data abstraction and problem solving book by Carano and Henry and most of you might be aware of uh, this book, a very famous book used in academia and also the content is taken from class notes by David Kemp. So I uh, thank uh, Carano and Henry for such a nice book and David Kemp for uh, excellent job of these notes. So let us start with an overview why data structures and object oriented thinking because data structure books are available but uh, you know linking them with object oriented aspect is very important so this book actually caters to this and notes also what uh, in principle we think the programming features like data type integer strings float double struct and arrays they are actually sufficient to solve any programming aspect problem. While if you are using loops, nothing, you know, in principle, it is sufficient to have nothing except while loops with test integers and arithmetic. So what we study in this particular course is to make you write the program better, quicker, easily maintainable and easily understandable code. So what we uh, say and what we mean by better, what is this better? Means uh, studying this problem solving and conceptual ideas that let us or that allow us to solve problem we, which we don't know how to solve or even if we are able to solve it, they are not fast enough. And also to learn new features and programming concepts that again makes your program good. Good in sense of uh, reading, debugging and extending. So programming and data structure, they are closely related. If you are doing a program, if you are making a program or if you are learning C, C++, Java, etc. Then the data structure plays an important role. As a computer science student or as a computer science guy, data structure is the basement of any programming language. So the way people think that we input data and the program executes with certain command, but the sequence of instruction is what algorithm you are using. The algorithm is the pseudocode or the set of uh, instruction that makes your program. In main sense, the data, the data on which your program is working. For example, this, uh, what I just said, let me take an example. Now, there are two people, right? One, he has a list of names and emails of all people in the class, right? There are two people. One of them, they sorted or he sorted alphabetically, while the other one didn't sort it. He used them in random order. Both of them are able to look up for the email of any specific student by name. And uh, by by virtue of uh, you know our common sense we know that the sorted list this person who has uh, a sorted list can find out it much uh, in quick way in uh, in a shorter time when we consolidate our data means when when we uh, collect the data the basic thing is how fast or how slowly we can solve a computational task. So our basic idea will be, you know, in total course, we'll be talking about this. The basic idea is what we are going to see. And there is one more thing. We have the data, that means the emails and um, other stuff, which these two people are being, one is sorting, one, one uh, person is not sorting. But there has to be operations also on this. What operations we are eyeing upon here? 
lookup operation. We are trying to find out. We are trying to find out from a list uh, something. So this is a lookup look uh, look operation as we say it. But sometimes that person may not exist or he might have uh, left. We need to delete the data also. So we are essentially interested in or concerned with inserting a pair of name with the email ID then removing a name from the list and looking up the email for a given name. So these are the three options or operation that we will be talking about in every sense. So we need to speed up the lookup operation. Uh, the sorted list, it will be good. But what if I say that I have a list and now I want to insert. If it is unsorted, the data is unsorted. Unsorted means uh, arranging in sending or descending order. If the data or the list of these emails or name, they are unsorted, then we can just add them at any point. At any point, we, we don't have to worry about the right place. But if the list is sorted, then we have to do some work. If this list is sorted, this is a list. I want to, want to insert some value, then I have to shift them. The shifting has to take place and this will increase the overhead. This is the overhead. So what, why, what I'm uh, trying to say that it depends. What is the best way to consolidate or collect your data and to work upon? It depends. It may happen that you have only three data, then why to sort them? It is as good as the sorted one. But if you have a huge data, then sorting may be required. So it depends and it uh, all different different operations and different different data and your action on that, it will tell you that, okay, you have to sort it or not sort it. So if you're thinking that unsorted data is not good, it is not like that. Many operations or many functionalities will be very good if the data is unsorted. Let me take an, another example. Right? Now, we want our data structure to support operations as we just discussed at remove and lookup. Let uh, me be more specific. Let this add be some add key value. Since this operation, this is an operation on this list. Now we are starting to generate or we are starting to come near to data structure. Add key and value. This operation is applied on that data which is listed, unsorted or not sorted. We want to add. So this will be a key and this will be a value. When I want to add or when I want to remove a key, the operation, this remove operation or a function, it gets a key and it removes a corresponding pair. Lookup means you get a key and you try to search that uh, particular uh, value. So this type of data structure is called as map or dictionary, right? This type of data structure is uh, map or dictionary. So the sorted list uh, is, if the question is, so is a sorted list a map? Not exactly. After all, all an unsorted list would also be a map. So what will be the difference? The main difference is that the word map describes the functionality, what we want, what the data structure is supposed to do. This is the map. It describes the functionality while the sorted list is a specific way of getting this functionality and we say that how we do it, what we want to do and how we do it. This distinction, this uh, difference is very important. Okay, because for small program it may not be a concern, but when you go to a bigger project, then you have to have a clear abstraction between what and how. Right? So maybe your friend, which I just discussed, uh, if he has an efficient or fast uh, lookup uh, version, then you can really use it. There is no worry about it. If he has described what to do it and how to do it and if it is getting fast enough and we say that okay we are getting in uh, no time the uh, lookup then you can use it and that is the best idea. 
Now, for map and dictionary, as I just indicated, we provide or there are various options add, remove, and lookup are main. They are the basic ones. So, to store data internally or correctly, there has to be the other way that implementation should be also good. So, the data along with the code, we call them, okay, data and code. But the functions, if I combine this data and code with this function, what these functions are, add, remove and look up, then we start saying it as abstract data type or ADT. This is an important aspect of our data organization using abstract data type and for a good code design, you have to understand this ADT that is abstract data type. So when we may start to make program, we usually think about we are going to use some arrays and structs and we try to process them as a programming language goes. But we now think of not only these arrays and structures, but the data structure itself as having functions that help processing these data, right? So now you have function along with your uh, data that becomes or that leads to object oriented design. What is an object? It consists of data and code, a data and code and uh, there are several different functions and which can act on this data. So one of the main things that uh, thinking in terms of object oriented or ADT type is to achieve encapsulation means encapsulation is a type of en type of capsule in which you want to put your data and functions together. Then comes the concepts of object. Encapsulation helps to achieve this modularity. What is this modularity? This confirms that different pieces of code can be analyzed and tested in isolation more easily. This is our modularity. So what we are trying to achieve in this course we are trying to study the basic and advanced method for actually implementing data structures to provide effective functionality and these some of these methods will require strong fundamentals we will use a lot of mathematics so a lot of mathematics we will be covering a lot of diagrams and you know animations will be there and more importantly is separating the what from how for your good code design utilizing this ADT to specify the functionality and also we'll study about good programming practice with our object oriented design in specific as it relates to our implementing data types. So this was the basic idea and we'll see more basics uh, in the later sessions and then we'll go to the actual data structures, their, uh, the functions, the all complications we are trying to make it more easy for you.